Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to a video. Um, I think this is a special video I decided to put together. This is something I haven't done in a while. Um, it's a top 10 list of all the rebirth monsters, the normal rebirth monsters. So this does not include the festival rebirth monsters like Thor, like um, Kana, like Incubus. You know, those monsters aren't going to be included on this list. This is the for the rebirth monsters that have like a 3 star counterpart. Um, the normal rebirth ones that are, that are on for the entire month. I decided to do a top 10 list of all the rebirth monsters, kind of for fun, um, and also kind of to show you know what certain monsters can be used for. Maybe some of these monsters are in your monster box and you just kept them there for quite a long time. And hopefully, um, you know, this could also be something that you're looking forward to in the future because they might bring some of these monsters back for for another rebirth in sometime in the future. Um, before we begin, I want to state a few rules because obviously like any top 10 list um, it's pretty subjective like this is mostly just my opinion and I'm just one player I can't speak for everybody else but I think I think this will still be pretty in insightful like I can actually um, mostly talk about what what each monster can be used for um, the second rule is there's if if a monster that I've included on the list um, has like a both a light dark version if I included the light version so say for example the dark seedler is on my list um, and and I've already used him or I I've already like talked about him then I will not be able to include the light seedler on my list so basically from the two elements I decide to choose the one that is better than the other and include it on the list um, the other thing is I've also decided to exclude one monster because I feel like, you know, if I include that monster on the list, you know, it's pretty much going to be number one always. And bec not because that monster is like extremely powerful, but it's that um, it has a lot of unfair advantage over the all the other monsters, and that is the Miho. Um, mainly because the Miho is the only monster that has super evolution right now. So her stats are like greatly increased when she's super evolved. Her, her damage and she also gets the super evolution skill which makes her super super strong. A lot of people use the dark one for PvP. Um, I think it's a little bit unfair to include her on the list. So I decided to exclude the Mihos. Yeah, very sad. Um, <laughs> uh, the last thing I want to say is um, kind of how I rate these monsters. Basically, I rated them by their usefulness um, in certain aspects of the game. So monsters that are useful in either progression or in um, some sort of late game use, I've decided to rate a little bit higher. And monsters that have multiple uses, you know, will be rated higher than a monster that has a single use, unless that monster's single use is um, extremely important in terms of progression or or some sort of um, late game usage like that really dramatically affects your game um, I don't know if that's a good explanation but anyways we'll see when I go down the list all right so number 10 the first monster that I want to talk about is the dark Fibian. Now this is a monster that is very very versatile. You can use him any way you want. He has very very balanced stats, low recovery, high HP, decent amount of attack, um, decent amount of defense. Well, this is not really high, but decent amount of all the stats. Um, he also has a battle rush, which is pretty much the most versatile skill you, I can think of because it it's both an HP, it's a, both a self heal and an SP boost, and he's also a healer at the same time. So basically, this monster can be used as a healer, a nuker, a tank, a bruiser, an attacker, anything. Anything that you want. You can have him do two jobs at the same time and he will actually still do pretty well. Um, you can make him do a single job and it, he will still, he'll still be decent, you know. Um, a lot of people use this monster for PvP, I see, because he has very balanced stats and he does do a little bit of damage. Um, he is dark, he also has that crit damage as well. So you can basically build him with like crit rate, double HP if you wanted to heal a lot so you can get the SP boost. Um, and, and then use his adrenaline to heal the team. Or you can go with a, a uh, you know, attacker build, you know, crit rate, double attack, and he can, he can be a nuker. And then still, still heal for like, um, 
you know, if he's hitting like four units, he can still heal for like 2k or something on his on the entire team, which is a pretty decent heal. And depending on how strong your team is, like if your team has a lot of attack and can kill the enemy team really fast, you're not taking a lot of damage, that might be enough to sustain your team through an entire dungeon. So that's actually quite good, you know. Um, the other use is for, for PvP, because he's relatively tanky and he has a bar boost and a self heal. Um, he's a little bit harder to kill, so a lot of people don't like to focus him. If you build him mostly tanky, like crit rate, um, double HP, he, he can get his bar up sooner because he kind of is like a, like a morale booster, he's a battle rusher. Um, and he can serve as an SP battery and a, and a heal for the team as well. If you have him with like Pugilist or something, he can also stun the enemy team. So that's actually quite quite good. Um, but besides that, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You can use him and build him any way you want. Like any way that you would, you would build a tank, an attacker, a full glass cannon, um, a bruiser, you know. Whichever way that you, you want to use him. So he's number 10 on the list, um, a pretty good monster. And we're gonna be moving on to number nine. All right, so this is a monster that I've used for quite a long time and I've pretty much uh, only used her for a Dragon Speed 10. She's currently replaced now because I have a better monster, but that monster isn't gonna be on this list because it's it's disqualified. Um, it's, not, it's not a normal, normal rebirth monster. Um, but mostly, Light Medusa. Light Medusa is mostly used for for her stun, 100% stun if she has 100% crit. Same with the Elemental Edge. Um, her skill set's really, really perfect for Dragon Speed 10 because what you want to do on the first wave is you want to stun either one of the side units or the Light Purse, and then when you get to the Dragon, you want to nu nuke the Dragon as hard as possible. So the Elemental Edge helps a lot with that. Um, she is light. She's an attacker. Unfortunately, her attack's not very high, which is one of her um, weaknesses, but it's not that important because the Elemental Edge kind of makes up for it. it. It hits quite hard against Dragon's B10, which um, the Dragon's B10 is light, so it's like you have Elemental Advantage over the, the light monster. Um, the other thing is she, she is, uh, because she is light, she has 10% more crit rate. So it's a lot easier for her to be gen with a ruin set and ha still have 100% crit, which is what I had her on with um, for quite a while. And um, this means that she's going to be doing more damage to the dragons, going to be um, able to kill the the wave, you know, maybe help kill the light purse on the on wave one a little bit easier. So she only has that single use, mostly for dragon speed 10. You just want to build her full glass cannon, crit rate, um, double attack, and ideally on a ruin set because she is light and um, basically just because she's light and you're probably going to be using some other dark dark unit in B10 she's never going to get hit so you don't have to worry about her tankiness at all just basically stack the most amount of damage you can on her and and it's a win um, yeah that, that, is, that is pretty much it so that, moving on to number eight um, number eight is a monster that also has a very good single use, and that is the Dark Coco. Um, the Dark Coco is a monster that a lot of people can use for Titans. Um, skill set wise, it's not super, super amazing. Like it's seventy percent, seventy percent attack down and blind. It's still, it's still very, very important debuffs, but the rate is not extremely high. Um, however. What is going on upstairs? I think they're I think they're banging again, um, <laughs> or 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 moving shit around. But he has uh, he has skill books, so he has a decent amount of attack, decent amount of HP and and, and defense. He's a balance type monster, kind of similar to the the Fibian, um, but however he does have skill books, and the skill books increase his his chance for his attack down and blind. And skill boost also increases damage, and with him being dark, um, he also has that crit damage lead. Although I would not recommend building him with uh, with with crit, like a crit main gem. But if you have some crit substats, it can actually up his DPS quite a bit, and he can actually do a little bit of damage to to Titans. Um, 
it's a it's a decent amount, but compared to like courageous strikers, it's it's nothing. So you mostly want to use him for his utility. Um, the the unfortunate thing about him is he's very expensive to build. So if you want to use him, um, you have to use a lot of skill books, which could be extremely expensive because it costs like I think it's like twenty two thousand or not two thousand two hundred and eighty k gold to like max skill monster i think my math is right if my math is wrong then i don't know i'm bad at math okay i'm bad at math um <laughs> that's it's yeah that's that it's phantom math it's phantom math i don't even remember how much each each one costs it's eight right eight eight uh oh no not two not two hundred and and 80k it's like 2 million 800 yeah it's quite a lot of gold it's it's, it's pretty expensive um, I think my math is right my math could be wrong but if my math is wrong then you do the math um, but anyways he's pretty expensive to build because of the skill books so you don't want to you don't want to you might not want to use him but if you have the money to spare, you could use him because he's dark, so you can use him for any element that you want. Um, but if you have the resources, you could also build one monster specifically, or not one monster, but a few monsters specifically as debuffers for each element um, if you're at that point of the game. But personally, I like if you're kind of casual like me, you can just go in with like a team that can beat any element using mostly light dark monsters and kind of just call it a day that's kind of what i do um with the exceptions of your courageous strikers you want to kind of use your courageous strikers the rgb ones um against the element that they have the elemental advantage against but that's pretty much it for the dark coco um he is number number seven yes he is number seven okay moving on number six number six is the the dark um the dark lat Dark Lat is a nuker that I've used for PvP for quite a while. Um, he has the PvP lead, and he also has skill... Uh, not skill... Yeah, he has he has skill books. But he also has the um, two-star counterparts that, you could, that are farmable. So it's very, very easy for him to have a max PvP leader skill of 35%. So a lot of people use him for that. Um, they pair him up with other dark attackers to kind of boost their attack. And he also has the Hunter on his second skill, so when he gets this off, it does a lot of damage. His first skill is an Adrenaline that, that's a self-heal. It's decent, but it's not really that useful um, where you're going to be using him. You're mostly using him because he's a Dark Attacker with skill books, and he also has the um, PvP attack lead, and he has Hunter. Um, you're kind of not really using him for his first skill. <clears throat> so most people build him with crit rate uh, double HP and I think that's I think that's the way to build him I mean, I've been talking too much like my voice is just cracking up so um, not double HP double attack crit rate double attack basically full glass cannon and they just go into to PvP with some other um, some other nukers like that dark seedler team that I showed earlier and he's kind of used for his leader skill and when he gets his second skill off the hunter is actually pretty decent as well um, a lot of people say he's like the weaker version of the dark mona and i can kind of agree because his first skill is not really all that useful it would be, it would be better if it's an adrenaline however um, his first skill hits harder because he is a monster that has skill book Although his um, base attack is lower, the skill book kind of makes it so that his first skill actually hits harder. So if you're using him with um, a team that wants to, you know, has harder hitting first skills, dark attackers. So say for example, like dark seedlers, or if you have like the dark Madragora, he's actually a really, really good monster to use with those. All right, so um, this is number number five. Uh, number five is a monster that I've used for a long time. This is a monster that not a lot of people know is good because she is a very, very old rebirth monster, but she helped me pr progress through the game. Um, like it, it was, it was night and day the, the moment I got her, um, especially really early on because she is a passive healer. 
that heals for 5% of his, her own HP. She's also a uh, she's only only a balance type, but she is also an HP aggressor with her second skill. So basically, you stack HP. Um, she heals for quite a lot. I still use her sometimes for for autoing um, TLC. Um, actually, no, I haven't been using her since I got like super evil Mihos. But she is a pretty pretty good um, passive healer to use with um, a, an attacker team because it heals for a flat amount, and with her aggression. Um, she can use, she can basically wave clear as, at the same time. A decent monster in PvP, I think, at this, as well. Um, definitely not top tier, but if you, if they ever bring her back, just know that she's a very good monster that you can use for, um, for progressing through Golem's B10. Basically, go with triple HP, um, stack her HP so she can heal a lot, and that is, that is the way to go. That is definitely the way to go. I think they're raving again. Um, it's all right. It's it's all good. It's all good. Number five is the is the dark birdie. Um, the dark birdie is a HP aggressor with um, with a heal at the same time. It heals for his own HP. So basically, he has a very very high HP pool. As you can probably tell, he'll deal a lot of damage. Um, and at the same time, he also heals for quite a lot. So. Basically, you use them to. Uh, you can use them for Golem Speed 10 to like help wave clear, and then he can help also sustain your team. He's a decent monster in PvP at the same time because he has a first skill aggression, so he provides a lot of threat. Um, mostly used as a filler slot if you don't have like multiple Dark Mihos, but still very very good. And for Clan PvP where you can't use so many repeat monsters, he, that's kind of where he shines. You can get three of him and kind of use him. Um, to fill your slots in clan pvp because he's he's one of the best i think that's pretty much it for dark birdie um this is a the, the next monster is a monster that a lot of people don't know is a rebirth monster but because they had her for rebirth quite a while ago um but this is also a monster that a lot of people have and that is the light victoria so they had her as a rebirth very very early on um that's where i got my multiple dark Vic, light vix not dark victoria light victoria um you know, every single time that I see, like, someone sends me their monster box to do a review or something like that, and I see them, like, feed away their Light Victoria, I'm like, where's that Light Victoria? I, like, I, I cringe a little, alright? It's not the, it's not the, like, um, it's not like, 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 you know, the, the cringy cringe, it's like the, the cringe where it's like, you're, you, you feel like physical pain, you know, like you see someone and you're like, you know, someone in physical pain and you, you feel it yourself. You know, you're you're just like, ooh, you know, like like that. Um, that's that's kind of what happens. That's kind of what happens whenever I see someone feed away their light Victoria. Uh, this is a monster that a lot of people got for free because they give one of her to everybody for free. And you can fuse Victorias to make her evil three. So she's very, very easy to raise. Um, I rated her very highly because she's one of the best monsters to use for Golem Speed 10 as a tank. And she has a lot of practical uses. You can use her for PvP defense, offense, um, you can use her for tanking a lot of things. You can use her for farming stuff, like if you have nothing better, because she is an aggressor. So she's, she's both tanky and she does damage at the same time. Um, but mainly she's the best for Golem Speed 10 because she can tank and because she's an aggressor, um, she can also dish out some damage because you, you do want to be, deal a little bit of damage, especially on the first wave in Golem Speed 10 to help you clear through that wave and before they get their actives up and start wiping your team. Um, she also has a universal attack lead, which makes her just really nice to bring for, for any team. Um, very good monster. Basically, stack defense on her, and she will she'll be great. Uh, the next monster is a monster that I actually mentioned earlier, and probably you can guess that is the Dark Seedler. Um, the Dark Seedler has an elemental edge on first go, and is also a dark nuker, and also has skill books, and also has 3k attack. Well, 3k attack is not that high, but with skill books, it's it's quite high. Um, if you have 100% crit, it has 100% elemental edge and also 100% defense down. Very, very strong monster for nuking anything. For PvP, for nuking dungeons, for nuking... 
yeah, just just nuking in general. Like you can just nuke anything with this monster. Um, Elemental Edge makes it so you can nuke anything you want. Defense down is very nice. You can if you have multiples, you can defense down and then nuke with the other ones, and then it just it just does a shit ton of damage for everybody. Um, it is also dark. It has the crit damage lead with an Elemental Edge on first skill, so it's it's quite amazing. Like you just you're you're just one shotting people like all day. Um, Really, really OP monster. I did a video a while ago with the Dark Sealer PvP team. Um, it was quite amazing, and I think a lot of people use this monster for PvP now because he was quite recent. Um, yeah, a lot of people have this monster. People that played for like maybe one or two or two months or so. I think it was like the the rebirth for two months ago. A lot of people have this monster, so they use him for PvP. Um, a lot of times when I look at my arena defense, a lot of people actually hit me with this monster. So he's very, very popular and also very, very strong. So that's Dark Seedler. Uh, moving on, this is another monster that I really, really liked a lot and a monster that I have a lot of history with. That is the Dark Mona. Um, Dark Mona was rebirthed twice and they, you know, they actually no, she was rebirthed once and she was a package monster the other time. So only people that, that either bought the package or um, have been playing for a long time have her. They recently allowed us to re-roll her slots and I basically got my Dark Monas to triple square so I can use them for, <laughs> for farming and stuff. Um, the reason I rated her very very high is not only because she is a very strong farmer for, for pretty much anything because of her morale boost plus Hunter plus her own attack lead works for herself because it's all dark monsters um, plus her high attack it's plus waifu um, <laughs> she she uh, yeah she's just very good like you can use her for for farming pretty much anything and although she might not be the exact best for for farming in general um, she's very very close and she's pretty much like rank 2 rank 3 for farming almost anything in the game um, very very nice monster for farming helps you progress quite a lot um, and if you like players that had her a long time ago basically just kind of nuke through the whole entire game basically just stack multiple dark monas and just just nuke through everything um, if you are a recent player that got the package she's a very nice monster for pvp um, i would say pretty pretty top tier for it for any dark attacker um, and also you know kind of near the top for for farming as well um, so yeah really really strong monster basically her skill set is just perfect like the the funny thing about the dark mona is i had this um, for people that have been watching me for a long time I say I have a lot of history with this monster because I was trying to get this monster for a while during the during the, the month where she was a rebirth and I wasn't able to get a single one with a square slot. I basically I I fed everything into the Dark Mode. I started feeding a lot of four stars. I fed um, just anything that I could feed. I started using all my Astro Gems to summon so I can get more fodder like on the last day to, to feed. And like I, I even wailed to get monsters to feed into the rebirth for her. Because this is a true story, by the way. Um, one day before her announcement, I was talking about Golem's V10, and I basically I tried to picture the perfect monster, and I basically described her skill set, like perfectly described her skill set. One day before she came out, and then I released that video, and then she came out, and I, the, the moment I saw her, I was like, oh shit, I need this monster, and it was uh, it was pretty tilting. Like I wasn't able to get get one with a square slot, which means she wasn't really usable. Um, but I still raised them and used them for quite a while, although they weren't optimal. Um, but yeah, after that month, I basically, like, I, I became Buddha, and I, like, nothing tilts me anymore after that month. Um, so yeah, really, really fun times. So, moving on to the last monster on the list. Um, this is the number one monster on the list. Now, if you guys might, might have guessed, like, you know, if you looked at all the rebirth monsters, you might have guessed who, like who who didn't he include? This is a actually surprisingly a light monster, um, and I think this monster has the highest practical use in the game, and that is the light radis. 
Um, this monster is just, he, he is sick. Like, there is no monster in the game that is like this monster. He is irreplaceable at the moment. He's the only light attacker that has um, sap on both his skills. He also has skill books, which basically increases his sap and also increases his damage. For anyone that uh, disagrees with me, you can uh, check out that, I think it's called Goodnight Golems B10. That was a video I made a while ago. If you look that up, then you'll you'll see. You'll see why he is number one. Basically, he's he has only one use. Actually, he has multiple uses. You can use him to farm story stage bosses as well, but mostly to farm Golems B10 and to farm it in record time. Um, he farms it extremely fast with his nukes. He can nuke through the waves. You pretty much have to have siphon sets, 100% crit on him. Um, clear the wave fast, get full bar, start nuking, start sapping, and then the golem dies in two turns. Like It's like 53 second golems B10 runs. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing. So, definitely super, super strong monster. Um, pretty much the monster with the highest practical use in the game. Just farming golems B10 is, is everything. It's your gold income, your astrogen income, your egg income, your everything. Um, just super, super strong for farming that, that, just that one dungeon. But he's also pretty good for farming all the other dungeons. But because he is the best, for that, I decided to make him number one. Um, hopefully they bring him back in the future for people that don't have him. And for people that haven't seen uh, Goodnight Golems B10, you can go look it up. It's uh, it's pretty sick. But anyways, that is that is pretty much it for the, it for the top 10 list. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It was just basically trying to uh, share some knowledge doesn't really have like a guide purpose or anything like that. I thought it would just be really, really fun. I went through all the monsters, put together a short list, and just kind of talked about them one by one. Now again, this is just my opinion. Um, you might think something different. And I didn't, you know, again, I didn't include any of the Rebirth Fest monsters. The, these are only the normal Rebirth monsters. Um, but anyways, that is pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.